Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko has announced he will run for president again next year. Lukashenko, who's ruled the country for 30 years, made the announcement whilst casting his vote in parliamentary and local elections. Sunday's poll is the first in Belarus since the 2020 presidential election, which gave Lukashenko a sixth term in office and led to mass protests. The elections are going ahead despite calls for a boycott by the opposition. And for the first time, observers from the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe were not invited to monitor the poll. And let's get more on this with Valery Kavaluski. He's part of a Bel the Belarus Democratic Forces. That's a coalition of parties that opposes the presidency of Alexander Lukashenko. And he joins us from Warsaw. Good to have you with us. First of all, tell us about these elections being held in Belarus today over the last few days and why the opposition boycotted it and ur urging voters to do the same. Thank you for having me today. Uh, this is indeed an important day because this is actually the first electoral campaign since 2020. Uh, and for these uh, three and a half years, uh, Lukashenko lived through fear because of his illegitimacy, because uh, Belarusian people refused to accept him, uh, because they refused to turn the page, as he insisted. And these three and a half years, Belarus has lived through mass repressions. Uh, about 6% of the population were forced to leave the country because of the persecution, because they were unable to, uh, to enjoy any fundamental uh, uh, basic human rights and freedoms. Uh, and, and even this electoral campaign was completely uh, tarnished by the absence of basic conditions for such elections. There was no competition, there were no alternative candidates, no parties could participate. The independent media has completely been wiped out uh, from the country. Civil society also, about 1,500 1, uh, civil society organizations have been destroyed uh, by, the, uh, by the regime of Lukashenko. That's why it was impossible to say that there are uh, even basic conditions on the ground. Mm. Also given, in taking into account that about 1,500 political prisoners, including all political leaders uh, who, who were in Belarus at that moment, are now in prison. With conditions as you describe them, with all opposition or the majority of the opposition in prison or in exile, uh, what do you make of the announcement by Lukashenko to run for re-election next year? Will anyone be able to stand against him? Uh, this is no surprise that he wants to run. Uh, just to note that this is going to be his seventh presidential mm. term. Uh, but this one, which is already abnormal uh, for a democratic uh, modern state, uh, and uh, uh, this this term that he is he's running now, he's completely illegitimate. He is not accepted by people, by the Belarusian people, but also by the international community. So his uh, uh, his sort of political space has uh, uh, narrowed significantly, and he cannot accomplish much. Uh, instead, what he is doing, he's uh, get, getting support from Russia, but instead he has to support their adventures, their, uh, their military and foreign policy objectives. Specifically, we're talking about the co-aggression of Lukashenko against Ukraine. Uh, in addition to providing material support to Russian military forces against Ukraine, he has also invited uh, Russian military to be in Belarus to expand their permanent military presence. This also includes the deployment of nuclear weapons, uh, which contradicts uh, uh, Belarusian obligations under non-proliferation treaty on nuclear weapons. And so instead of uh, strengthening independence of Belarus, he has surrendered a lot of sovereignty to Russia, mm. and he has invited a lot of trouble in our own house. Uh, now we feel threat to our own independence. Uh, and also I'm wondering how you feel about isolation from the world stage. I mean, this was the first time that the OSCE monitors were not invited to this poll. Does it feel as if the world is, is somewhat turning its back on Belarus? Uh, I would say that the isolation is of the regime of Lukashenko, but not of the Belarusian people. Since 2020, uh, Svetlana Tikhanovska, who is the winner, uh, presumptive winner of those elections in 2020, has led uh, the democratic movement, uh, has advocated uh, for support of Belarusian efforts to restore democracy in Belarus, and to, uh, and to protect the independence of Belarus uh, from uh, the advancements, from very aggressive and hostile actions of, uh, of the Russian Federation. And so I cannot say that Belarus is isolated. I can say that the regime of Lukashenko is politically and diplomatically isolated.
Do you expect, though, to see anything like the mass protests that we saw in 2020 in the run-up or even indeed following the next presidential election next year? Uh, it is possible. Uh, at the moment, though, I can tell that uh, Lukashenko is building a totalitarian system in which any dissent, any, any, any willingness to uh, express your political or civil views on the situation in the country are, are met with uh, uh, brutal, brutal repressions when people can can be sent to prison for five, six years just for uh, putting a like uh, in Facebook or in other social media. If people wear clothes in specific combination of colors, like, for example, yellow and blue in support of Ukraine, they're sent to prison for five to six years. Uh, so uh, the situation now is that uh, the society has been completely atomized uh, by, by the repressions of the regime. People are afraid not even to act or not, not even to speak, but even to think uh, about uh, uh, something disloyal to the regime because the regime is controlling everything. But at the same time, I have to point out that this support uh, of Russia uh, is instrumental for Lukashenko to uh, to maintain his presence in power. Without Russia's support, he would be sin long, gone since long. OK. Valery Kavaluski, very good to speak to you. Thanks for taking the time to join us on Al Jazeera.